Hello, students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker, and welcome to this video today talking about how that we can actually project a moment onto an axis or line. Okay, so we've already covered the topic of dot products back in chapter two. And in chapter two, we talked about the dot products always take one vector and figure out how much of that vector is along another vector. So a moment is a type of vector, just like a force or a position vector. It's just that it's a rotational vector, right? Your moment vector is basically your axis of rotation as we think about what that moment vector really means. And so bringing together these two topics, we can say to recall that two things. One is going to be a moment around a point. Okay, so this is gonna be the moment around point A is equal to a position vector. This position vector goes from A to the line of action of our force in our cross product, right? So this is a moment about a point. And it's about point A, okay? So that's what we learned in a previous section here in chapter four, taking a moment a point. We can do this with two dimensions or three dimensions. Now we're gonna combine that with our idea of what is a dot product. And so number two here is that a dot product finds the projection of one vector along another. And so if our vector of interest is a moment vector, we then can dot that moment vector onto a line and come up with a moment along that line, okay? So there's two different options in order to do these computations. The first option, number one, is gonna take advantage of the tools that we've already used. And so the first step is going to be to find a moment around a point on a line. It technically doesn't matter what point you pick, just pick any point along your line of interest. And then the second step, so then we're going to want to dot the moment onto a line. Okay, so what this looks like is if we want to then compute the moment along line AB. Okay, so notice in this notation here that I have shown two different points instead of just one in the subscript here. So instead of this being a moment about a single point, this is a moment about a line and that line going between point A to point B. So this is going to be equal to a moment about point A as a vector. I'm going to dot that onto my line of interest. In this case, the line of interest is going to be line AB. So I'm going to take that times a unit vector. I'm going to write this as UAB hat. Okay, the unit vector along AB. So let me label these different pieces here. So we have the moment around line AB. Just realize I forgot an N in the around there. I forgot it up here too, because I'm starting a new way to spell around. Moment around line AB is equal to the moment about or around point A dotted with the unit vector along line AB. Okay, so that's that same equation there in words. A moment around line AB is equal to the moment about point A dotted with the unit vector along AB. Now I made one small error 
in this equation. And I apologize for that, but it's good to catch now. And that error is that I wrote that I ended up with a vector coming out of a dot product. And that's impossible. Any dot product always gives us a scalar. Now I am able to turn this into a vector and I'll get that, I'll get back to that here in a little bit. And so I consider this kind of like the two-step option. Okay, so option one is my two-step where I'll take my moment about a point first and then I'll dot it onto that line of interest. But it turns out that we can actually combine these two steps into one. And so this is going to be option number two. And this is called the mixed triple product. I always thought the mixed triple would make a really good uh, figure skating maneuver, right? Right along with the Lux and the Sao Cow, right? It's a, a, the, tr the mixed triple. So what we're gonna do with the mixed triple is that instead of writing this as the dot product of the moment about point A and that unit vector, I'm just gonna flip the order. We know the dot products are commutative. Okay, so I could write this as U hat A, B dotted onto the moment of A vector. And in that form, it turns out, because I'm dotting vector components of a unit vector onto basically the i hat, j hat, k hat, which are in the top of a, of a cross product determinant, what happens here, so this is the moment about a, b line as a scalar, in my top row now, instead of, I, instead of having i hat, j hat, k hat, I'll have u, a, b sub x, u a b sub y and u a b sub z and i'll label those in just a second in my next row we'll go with blue i have my r x r y and r z and then in my third row i have my f x my f y and my f z now notice I have the straight up sides on this, right? So this is a determinant, not just a uh, matrix. So just let me put a little note here. This is referring to a determinant. And to label my rows, my top row here is the unit vector along the line AB. So that's my line of interest. My next row is a position vector. Or a moment arm, which we talked about that R vector. And this is fundamentally still the same vector in the R cross F to find a moment. But now because we're going from a line to a force, it turns out we can start anywhere on that position vector. So this is a position vector um, from anywhere on line AB to the line of action of my force vector. Okay. So where before we could go basically from our point of interest, we took a moment about a point, from the point of interest out to anywhere on the line of action, we've now have gained um, full options on both ends, anywhere on our line of interest out to anywhere on the line of action. Okay, so it's like, not only do we have infinity lines we could pick, but like infinity plus infinity, which of course is still infinity. And then the final row here is the simplest one of all. This is the force components. Now, if your force is already given in components, just list them out here, X, Y, Z. If you're given information about the geometry, you may have to solve for a line along the force, along the line of action, and then convert a magnitude into components. The same kind of things we did back in chapter two. So once you have this, you now have a numerical determinant. 
Okay, notice that the first row of this determinant is not vectors, right? When you take a cross product, you have an I hat, a J hat, and a K hat in this top row. Therefore, you get a vector out of that determinant. This is now going to be numbers. These are going to be unit vector components that will all the values be between negative one and one without any vector direction assigned. Your Rx, Ry, Rz are just going to be distance uh, variables. And then your Fx, Fy, and Fz are going to be the, the, the magnitude of the components of the XYZ um, pieces of the force, right? So numbers, numbers, numbers in all three rows. And so that when we take a determinant, all we need to do is we need to basically multiply on these diagonals just like we did before, and we'll end up with getting a numeric value. Okay, if, if any of you have used Excel very much, there's a function called the sum product. And in the sum product, we're basically taking the sum or we're adding together a series of products or, or multiples. And so in this case, we're basically gonna take the sum product of the diagonals. And this is the idea of a mixed triple. Now, one cool thing about a mixed triple is that most of your calculators that do any kind of vectors will compute a numeric mixed triple, essentially a determinant of a three by three numeric matrix. Okay. So once we get a value out of this mixed triple or out of our cross product, and then we're going to dot that with the line um, of interest. If we want to find, so if you need the vector, I'll write this in, in words first, the vector components of the moment of F, this is force vector F along line AB. That entire thing could also be written as a moment along line AB as a vector, right? So no longer a scalar, but now a vector. It turns out it's a fairly simple computation. And you may remember this from the difference between the scalar component, back when we looked at dot products, the difference between the scalar component and the vector projection was simply one unit vector, okay? So we could write this, that the moment of A or round line AB as a vector is equal to, so I'll go and write this as the cross product. So my R vector cross my force vector. And then we dot that onto this unit vector of A, B. So further indicating unit vector by putting the hat above it, right? This is exactly what we computed up here in option one. So that would be a scalar. And then we take that scalar value and multiply it times the direction of line AB. What is the direction of line AB? The vector is showing on your screen right now. It's U hat AB. So when we multiply times those unit vector components, not just the numeric components, these are the, the directional components, the I hat, J hat, K hat, and the coefficients that come with those, we end up with the moment of the force F along line AB. So again, just to emphasize this, that what is inside these square brackets, this is the scalar. We could write this as the moment around line AB, and then the entire thing, including that unit vector, is going to be the vector M A B vector. Okay, so once again, using the unit vector to add back in directionality. And we're going to go through a nice detailed example on this topic. So hopefully that will help you kind of lock in this concept. I appreciate your attention today and hope you're having a good one.